Rub up your engines! Back before the days of SUVs were the American Station Wagon. Here's the 77 Chrysler, town and country. God just bought it for 2,500 bucks from, believe it or not, a 99 year old man. Been sitting in the garage with the windows rolled up for years. Now, luckily most of the windows are rolled up, so the only rats and mice got under the hood, which is gonna be typical, I'm sitting that long. So the interior isn't all rotten from rats and mice making nests and eating holes and crapping all over the place. So that's a good thing. Station wagons, hey. You can get the whole family in them. <laughs> in this case, a family of tires and an igloo. <laughs> And of course, the window comes down electrically, too. They were high-tech for their day. Look at that. This came from Jersey. Yeah, in the garage, you can see a little bits of rust, but really, if you're going to buy one of these, you got to open the back because these mechanisms will be destroyed by rust. That's the first thing that went. And in this case, it obviously spent a lot of winters in a garage because it's not damaged much at all. And the paint fading off here, they can all be sanded down and painted. It's not that big of a deal. And yes, even back in these days, they were using unleaded gasoline. But unlike the real early woodies, <laughs> this isn't wood. <laughs> it's just decals. It's amazing that a bunch of it is still on, to tell you the truth. It's not that bad. The decals are still there. Now, this is something that Americans were always big on. Well, actually, two things. Wayne wall tires and hiding the tires behind these crazy covers. I always hated it when I was a young mechanic working on these things because, hey, in Niagara Falls, they rust and you could never get these things off. When I got a flat tire, they were a pain in the butt, but they liked the streamlined style. Now, it is like the family truckster. It's huge inside. And basically, of course, what are you riding on? You're riding on a couch. <laughs> Wee, back and forth. No bucket seats in these days. It was like driving a couch. And when you're driving these things, as you'll see, you don't really drive them. You point them like a sailing ship. Look at a point and you try to head towards that point. You got a real water temperature gauge, a real alternator charging amp meter, fuel gauge, of course, and the clock. Doesn't work anymore, but at one point it did. A push button radio. Woo! And believe it or not, it's an AM only radio. I had one when I was a kid. I had to get an AM FM converter and stick it on and adjust it to get FM stations. At one point in time, this baby had air conditioning. Of course, oodles of chrome. Of course, some of it's pitted now. You gotta expect that over the years. But it's all solid. It can be re-chromed if you really wanted to. And what do we have? We got the Lean Burn V8. Of course, it's a V8. Now, it still has a V-twin air compressor, which probably bit the dust decades ago. It's still there. It doesn't work. But then again, I can spin it by hand, so it's not locked up. You could probably even fix it if you wanted. And check it out. They even had a cooler run to the power steering pump. These were relatively well-designed cars. Now, this is a tow package car. So it's a 440 cubic inch engine. Yeah, it's 195 horsepower, which was a lot in the day. But on the other hand, it's got 325 foot pounds of torque. So they take off. I remember driving these things as a kid when I was a young mechanic. You step on the gas and these babies start moving. Now as to whether they'll move where you're pointing them, that's another story. The suspension is relatively antiquated, but they do have big old power brakes. You hit those power brakes and these front wheels will lock up on a dime. No ABS in these days. They're funky looking alternators. Well, at least it doesn't have a generator on it. And if you want to see, it's kind of interesting. The regulator isn't built in like in a modern one. There's a regulator over here. They're separate regulators. Now I like that because instead of throwing the baby away with the bath water, if a regulator breaks on a modern alternator, you got about the whole stupid thing here. You could just buy the regulator. But interesting enough, there's no mirror here because that was an option. And whoever bought this car originally decided not to opt out for the option. Of course, being a little bit later model, they put these bumpers on the bumper. They originally didn't have these, but that was done to appease safety regulations. Since the front one doesn't have the fender cover on it, you'll see there's the full glory of the white wall tire and the Chrysler original hubcap. The tires are about 30 years old. They dry rotten a little. You'll have a hard time finding a white wall tire these days. You see a little rust there? Ah, oh, that's just on the quarter panels. You can easily replace that stuff. It's not that bad. A big old station wagon that people no longer have 
with a big old V8 engine. It's got a lot of torque, maybe not that much horsepower, and they still can go quite well, as you're going to see. If the driver's side has a mirror. Well, they had to by law. They had no choice. Big old springs on the door. Listen to this. That's what doors used to sound like. Let's check out the engine. Still got a nice V8 rumble. And yes, it may be old, but it does have seat belts. And the old column shifter will put it in drive. And away we go, sailing down the road. Now it's got the steering wheel jitter. They get old, that's what happens. Speedometer cable, they have cables, that's how they wear out. But, hey, it is a station wagon. Now, here's the thing, watch. Look, I can turn the wheel, and it still pretty much goes straight. <laughs> These things are just like sailing, as I said. Tap, 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 and sound. That's the speedometer. They all do that when they get old. So we're going to launch the ship here. Here we go. And we'll give it some gas. You can see. Now, it makes noise, and it takes off. Now, of course, it isn't a race car because it's more like a sailboat. It's more like a yacht. It's a land yacht is what it is. <laughs> and sure, it's old and the shocks need replacing. But, you know, if you know what you're doing, I've driven these things for years, you point and go. And with the nice emblem in the front, you got a great thing to line up with the middle of the road because these things are big. But as long as you keep that front there lined up with the line, you're not going to have too many problems. Now, with this particular one, you got to consider the tires are 30 years old, needs an alignment, but I mean, it still goes down the road. I guarantee you, I would put new tires on it because you never know, the dry rider ones might blow. But I really wouldn't have qualms of jumping in this thing driving to California. It would just be like riding on a magic carpet, sailing down the road, and these old V8s, they, they don't have any problems breaking down. No clattering, step on the gas. Yeah, this is a gas hog. It's got a four barrel. You'll be sucking down gasoline with this. But if you're cruising down the road, you'll get in uh, mid upper teens if you're going 55, 60 miles an hour. And really, for its age, it still idles pretty good. And look, it's got a USB. Now it is plugged into a cigarette lighter, but what the heck, it works. So here it is an old piece of Americana, the family truckster, a tank on wheels. People would go to drive ins bring pillows, kids would sleep, people would take these to the beach. You could go all around all that space and check it out. Even got a spoiler. Now there's a story behind it. It actually came with a spoiler. It's not an add-on. But it's not what you think. They put the spoiler not for aerodynamics so it wouldn't take off. This thing would never take off. It's to keep dirt from getting the window dirty. It would blow a bunch of it off because people were sick of their back windows are dirty all the time. And Americans are lazy people. They don't want to go back there and actually clean the window. So they put the spoiler on to keep the window from getting dirty. <laughs> There's nothing like the side step doors. I mean, you can get things in and out, groceries, whatever, a bunch of kids, you got dogs, you put a little kennel chain in the back, have a bunch of dogs in the back. They were really handy, they're what Americans always wanted back in the day. You got the American couch seats, front and back, you can sleep on these things if need be, and many a child were created wantonly or not in some of these back seats so i personally find it a shame that they're not really into station wagons anymore for america that's the end of an era nobody's making station wagons maybe and I, i'm hoping maybe they'll make electric ones the electric ones are so efficient it won't really matter if it's a bigger vehicle and they need big batteries anyways and there's a lot of room to put a battery in so maybe they'll bring back electric station wagons who knows these are a beast from the past with a big old V8 engine and you know if you're lucky to find one like he did for that kind of money 2500 it runs as good as this hey why not pick one up if you want a knock around car or you want something for the weekend or you want a toy to fix it up like new you can have a lot of fun with one of these relatively cheaply because it's not like an old Mustang or a Charger that are collector's items and they're going for 60 70 80 grand or more you can get these pretty cheap and have some fun with them and here's some bonus questions and answers. Delian 345 says I got a 2018 Buick LaCrosse. The check engine light came on and then it went off. It doesn't feel like there's anything wrong with the car. Should I be worried about it? Runs okay. I wouldn't worry about it. Here's how the systems work. Every time you start your car, every like minute and a half, your car's computer runs all the tests of all the systems. Then it starts over and does it again. And if after so many times it finds the same problem, it turns your check engine light on. But 
<laughs> it never stops thinking. So even then, it analyzes every minute and a half. And if after so many tries of it analyzing it again, and it doesn't see that same problem, it'll turn the light off. Now, if you want to know what it was, it's in 2018. Any good mechanic like myself has a high-level scan tool, and they show historical codes. And when we plugged ours in, you could see what the code was, and you could find exactly what the problem was, because the historical codes stay in those things. The only way you get the historical code gone is by resetting the whole thing, draining the battery, putting a one ohm. 10 watt resistor in line and connecting the battery cables when they're off the battery and that will erase all the memory but if that hasn't been done it's still going to be in your memory and any good mechanic with a good scan tool that does historical codes will be able to tell you what it was so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell